Hey, welcome back to another application tutorial for C Sharp. We're making a car app, and so far we have created a way to build an inventory of items in the store. So that is case number one that we finished in last video. So now we're going to move on to case two, which, as you might recall, was about adding something to the cart. So it's a good idea in your code to comment things. So let's go add to cart. And for the first case, let's say, let's uh, add item to inventory. At the end, we have to remember to put in a break. Okay, so we should be able to do something similar to what we did with a cart. So we could probably do a message to start with. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is tell the user that you chose to add a car to the shopping cart. And then I think it would be nice to be printing the inventory form so they can see their cars that they have to select from. And then finally, I'm going to ask them, which item would you like to buy? And I'm going to be expecting a number. So I'm thinking right now that maybe it would be wise to print a number in front of the items when I display the cart. So let's go down to print inventory. So I have a for each loop right now, and it prints the word car. However, it would be good to have a number for these guys. So I'm going to change the for each to a little bit different. I'm going to change a regular generic for. All right, so the for loop, the generic for loop, or the standard has a three part to it. So we have an initializer, so i equals zero. And then we have a condition, so i is less than the size of the cart. So as I recall, s dot cart list dot is it length or size, but in C sharp it is dot count. And the last item is an incrementer, so I plus plus will move by one. So now we have a problem. It won't print C anymore because C is no longer defined. So let's erase that. So what I'm looking for is S dot car list. And then I'm going to put in there the item number. So I is the counter, the loop counter. So this will give us the exact same result. However, the advantage that I'm getting here is that I can show the car number. So I can say car number and then type in a letter I and that will show the numbered list. So slightly different than what we did before, but it should work. So let's see what we get up until this point here. So let's uh, run this. And this time when we add a car, it should have a car number in the inventory. So let's do a one, add the Ford Focus. There it is, so it's car zero. Okay, so let's add another one. Let's go Chevy Camaro and his price. Okay, so we have car zero and car one. That seems to be working. So now if I type in number two, it says add a car to your cart, it prints it out again. Okay, let's go to zero to quit. So now I know which number I'm expecting here. So let's go int uh, car chosen. We'll do that. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to have a car chosen and I'm going to get it from the read line. All right, so the next line is we're going to start adding things to the shopping list. So let's do s.shoppinglists.add. So the first item will be item zero. Now, which item do we want to add? Well, I want to get it from the car list. So we have an inventory of what cars are there, and car chosen is a number, which is chosen by the user as well. All right, so the last thing I want to do is print the shopping cart. So let's do a print shopping cart method. It doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and create it. Down here in the bottom part, we have a new item. So let's see. We could probably use the same kind of code that we did in the previous example. So let's copy and paste that. And let's go, instead of saying car list, we're going to have it's the shopping list, right? And uh, let's give them a message here. All right, so we're going to print a message that says cars you have chosen to buy. We'll go through the shopping list one by one, and then we will show the uh, total number of cars. Okay, so that looks to me like a, a working event. Let's go ahead and run it. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do when I run this is I'm going to add two cars to the inventory. So let's put in the famous Ford Focus and then a Chevy Corvette. All right, so now I have two cars in the store. I'm going to add them to my cart, which is option two. So let's see. It prints my store, and it says, which one would you like to buy? A number. So I'm going to print a zero. All right, I'm going to add another car. So let's try two again. And which car do I want? I want to buy another one from item zero. So you can see that my shopping cart has two Ford Focuses in it. Let's add one more. So I'm going to do a two again and add item zero. So now I have three Ford Focuses. Now the last part is to do checkout. So we'll figure out how much these three cars cost me. Well, let's do that in the next video. So it's a good point to stop.